afternoon parents I wanted to show you um, our Pearson Realize Math website this website is actually used to um, for a teacher edition where I can go in and do all these these lessons digitally show you guys how to do these lessons digitally but there's also a student version and I wanted to show you the student version today so I'm going to use a student's username and ID um, and when I use their username and ID this is how you guys are actually going to be logging on so I'm going to be posting on the um, classroom page your student's ID number and you can see here that the ID number matches their name so you find their name and then here's their username it's this full bar right here where it says 914-9946 at VESD dot dash CA so I'm going to be typing that in here and I'm going to pretend like I'm Mr. Josiah right now so Josiah when you watch this you will not have to do this part because I'm acting like you, buddy. So I'm logging in with that the, his ID number and the at vesd-ca, and then I'm going to use his password is just going to be those numbers. So again, 9149496. I'm not using the at vesd-ca for that password. So I'm going to log in. Okay, and I'm not going to be saving his password on there. So what happens here now is it shows what products we have available to us. And we're going to be clicking on the Envision 2.0 Common Core Grade K Math. And that's going to open up a student setup. So it says hello, step one, step two, step, er, and then done. So um, the students are going to choose their language. They're going to pick a profile icon. And you know what, for you, Josiah, today I'm going to pick the soccer ball because you like to play soccer out at recess and that's as simple as that you're gonna hit let's go so now it says hello Josiah here's work that you have to do and here you can explore so here I can assign things to you guys and right now there is an assignment it's a topic one through four test that Josiah can start and take right now you can get started on that there's also e-text available so this actually opens up the student workbook that you guys have at home they have it as the interactive edition which means the students can actually use their mouse clicker to write in that and so when they open up like a lesson that we're working on and that I that they have in their math book they can do this digitally as well so it's all loading and then um, there's some tools that they're gonna use to get into the right lesson so as it's loading we have to find the right topic number so we're working in topic 10 right now and the lesson that we're going to be doing tomorrow is topic 10 4 so I'm going to show you for tomorrow's lesson so the lesson has different pieces to it solve and share is kind of like our full class lesson that we do to start opening up the topic it's like a problem of the day this is where we typically use manipulatives we're touching objects we're showing me how that they solve these problems with physical objects now you guys might not have that option at home so students can always draw that in okay so solve and share looks like this okay so the problem is again written down here on the bottom and the students would, you would read this to your student and then they would solve it again. You could use objects or you could write that in. Okay, going to the next page, it actually now breaks down a little sample problem in these green boxes. So this is actually showing you a breakdown of the lesson and kind of the components of what they're gonna be needing to do. Then it has what's called guided practice. So this is always the part of the lesson that we would do together with this, that I would do with the students. Guided practice means that I'm showing them how to do each problem, they're doing it and completing it with me. Again, the instructions are written on the bottom. So in this whole unit, we're working on ways to make numbers using um, breaking two numbers apart. So it's really about um, having the whole and breaking it into those two parts. And since they're all the numbers in the teens, they're always going to have a 10 frame that's full here. And then they're going to be using this, the bottom 10 frame to complete that other part of that missing piece. So it's pretty simple for an adult, but for a student, you'll see students solve these in different ways as their mind is kind of trying to uh, get wrapped around the idea of breaking these numbers into parts. So sometimes you'll see students say, okay, I know this is 13, they'll be able to, um, they'll count 13 objects one by one here. You'll actually see them put one, two, three, four counters in there. Um, you can also use these tools over here. For example, there's some stamps where the students can actually put the counters in and they can drop them in those boxes. So I could do this as a student and now I'm not having to draw these. But again, if you want your kiddo not on so much tech time, I would call that screen time, then you wouldn't have to do that. So as a student, I'd be counting these out, 13 of them. Now, they can use two different colors when they do that as well. 
But what we try to get them to do here now is recognize we have two parts that made 13. The first part was this full 10 frame, which a full 10 frame always means we have 10. And then the second part was this 10 frame here where we only had three. So we want them to see that there are those two parts made 13. And they could go through and complete this math assignment virtually here, finishing the rest of these problems with you watching and making sure they're doing it correctly. Now when you get to this next page, it's called independent practice. The independent practice is where you kind of want to just read the instructions to them and you want to see how they do on their own. So it's just important that, you un that they understand what they're supposed to do, but there's not supposed to be too much guiding or cueing here. Now obviously you want to pay attention to what your kiddo can do, but having done that guided practice together, they really should have a strong um, understanding now of what it is that they're supposed to, what the expectation is on these following pages. So that independent practice is you would finish that up and then it's got this homework piece which obviously everything that we're doing is homework right now, so you would not have to do this. This is not a required part of the math lesson unless you guys want to. Some kiddos um, knock this math out very quickly and some need a little bit more time. It just depends on your student. So again, this is just the online component to our program here. You are welcome to get on and use it here. I will um, assign some assessments as we get through a topic and I'll be following our April homeschool calendar here. Okay, and um, so you'll see like next Friday, we'll, or I'm sorry, next Thursday, we'll be taking the assessment online. So it's important that you are kind of staying on track here, um, getting through these lessons. So that way when I do make the assignment, uh, the assessment available, which I will put it available through the weekend. So you guys have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to complete it. Um, so I'll give you a, multiple days to do that. But that way I have time to take a look at it and see um, any areas that they were struggling with. So I hope that makes sense for you um, and that log on made sense for you. And if you have any questions, as always, feel free to reach out on, to me on Dojo and, um, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks so much, guys.